Hey, this is Jimmy. Yeah, it's a really, really crappy day, so I thought I'd make a video. <laughs> Something to do. Uh, so, I'm thinking, what, what can I make a video out of today? I thought, you know what? I got a couple rifles down in the, the gun safe that might be cool to look at. So, let's check them out. What do we have here? Oh my gosh, I have an M1 carbine, an M1 Garand. Or Garen, it just depends on who you talk to. I call it a Grand. Uh, both examples are both Springfields. They're both built in 1943. There's actually websites online. If you look, just type in M1 carbine serial numbers and M1 Garen serial numbers. And uh, look at the receivers, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, enter the numbers. They'll tell you what year it was made, what factory. Uh, some really interesting tidbits on that stuff. It's uh, amazing how much information they've actually kept online for this, these things. Anyways, let's uh, look at the carbine first. It's a beautiful example. It's in very good condition. It, um, the barrel and all the components are all almost matching. There's very few M1 carbines that have matching where the, all the parts were made uh, by the factory. There was during the war, Springfield, General Motors, Rockola, Winchester, Har uh, Harrington Richardson, H&R, and I'm sure there was Sag Slosh, General Motors. Uh, they all built M1 carbines for the war effort. And to keep the demand uh, up with the demand, they mix parts. So if, uh, let's say, General Motors was missing barrels, and they needed barrels, they'd call Winchester. Winchester would sell, send them a pallets of barrels to build more rifles. And the, it went that way with, with all the companies, uh, you know. Anyways, this one's a beautiful rifle. It's got the magazine holder on it. Nice sling. It's all period correct except for the, the top cover. The top cover is an M3 carbine uh, cover. It's just a heat shield. It looks nice. The, the original one was a wood one. Uh, we don't have it right now. Or I'd, uh, oops. I don't have it right now or I would have put it back on. Uh, bayonet lug. They generally all had 15 round magazines. And 20 round magazines. The 20 round magazines for the M2 machine gun. The M1 carbine generally had the 15 round magazines of M1 carbine. The carbine round is uh, close to your 357 Magnum round, just slightly less velocity. Uh, it's a pretty decent round, actually. Uh, a lot of deer have been popped with this. It, it's, uh, it's a strange round. It, uh, Let's say you shoot a can or a, a pumpkin or something, it explodes when it hits. It's uh, the round tumbles so much through whatever it hits, it tears them up. Uh, this was uh, actually used towards the later end of World War II, uh, the Korean War, Vietnam, and uh, it was up until the 80s when they actually uh, phased them completely out of uh, service with the U.S. military, and it was used. Uh, up until about five or six years ago in like the Philippines, a lot of those Asian countries. This is a very fun gun to shoot. It's semi-automatic. It's decently, acceptably ap accurate as peep sights. Uh, really fun gun to shoot. It's light. Be a great gun for a guy to pack around. Uh, if you had to carry this all day, this would be a lot better off than the next rifle I'm going to show you. This particular rifle was picked up back in the 90s uh, when we we had our licenses to buy guns. It's been locked up ever since. Anyway, this is a very nice rifle. Okay. Very clean, great condition. Alright, the next rifle right. I have here is 
and M1 Garand. It shoots 30-06. Uh, you've probably seen these online or on video games. This one here, I uh, refinished the stock. <laughs> you can tell it's very, very shiny. The military uh, wouldn't have had a stock like this. Uh, the, it's a Springfield. It too was made in 1943. Uh, all the parts are matched from Springfield Armory on this one. It uses an eight round stripper clip. So if anybody says uh, what kind of clip you got in that gun, you can say, well, this one has a clip, but my AR-15 has a magazine. <laughs> Anyways, this is a very accurate rifle. It shoots 30-06. Uh, I've shot it quite a few times. Uh, we've had it since the 90s. It's a very nice gun. They're rare and rare to find. And in decent shape. You uh, still pick them up. They're quite expensive now. Uh, uh, CMP sells them. Uh, a lot of, you see them a lot in some of these uh, gun warehouses and stuff every once in a while. But basically, CMP right now is the biggest holder of the M1 Grand and M1 Carbine, to be more precise. Uh, back in the 90s, the Carbine and the M1 Garands were uh, uh, quite common. You could pick them up for a very, very good price. And uh, even back after the war, they were, you know, a $10 gun. I can imagine, uh, you know, buy a gun like this for $10. Yeah, those days are gone, that's for sure. Yeah, this is a fantastic shooter. I really like it. Uh, it was a standard rifle for the American soldier in World War II, Korea, and through Vietnam, actually. There's quite a few guys packing these things. They weren't frontline service rifles by then, but they were still in use. Uh, it was a very heavy gun, if I remember correctly. It's over five pounds, easily. Uh, you can probably Google the weights and stuff. Uh, they're known for, uh, they call it Grand Thumb, with these because, oops, Grand Thumb for these because people would push the magazine in and the bolt would close behind it and smash their thumb into it. <laughs> it's uh, got a very, very strong recoil spring. So what the trick was to keep your hand on the side when you're pushing the clip in. And then smacking it home. Right, this is a fantastic rifle. It's in very good condition. The boring rifling is very good. Uh, it's been in our family for, you know, since like 93 or so. You know, uh, just showing you what I know. Um, if you want more information, you can uh, look online. I'm not saying I'm a history expert on these things. I'm just showing you what I have in hand. Anyways. If you enjoy uh, my little show and tell here. Uh, this is, if you ever get a chance to shoot one of these, you won't be disappointed. Uh, this is true history. Uh, they're just fun to shoot, you know, uh, very accurate, but carbine's light and then the grand is heavy. It's just a fantastic toys and excellent gun for your collection. Well, anyways, I hope you like that. And maybe I'll find something else to look at sometime if you guys enjoyed this, my rambling. <laughs> anyways, thank you very much. Ha, 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 ha.